everybody and welcome to the Keto 101 videos with Yogi. Um, make sure that you click like and subscribe down below so that you can get all the new videos. Give us feedback on the comments and make sure you check the show notes for any kind of offers or links to products that we may mention in, in the show videos. Also, remember, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is simply guidelines of how to do a ketogenic diet in basic standards and how I would follow the ketogenic diet. All right, everybody, have a great day and enjoy the video. Hey, everybody, this is another Keto 101 with Yogi, and uh, today we're going to talk about getting your food ratios right. So we're going to talk about what your plate should look like per meal. Basically, with the typical keto guidelines, the base from where you want to start out with, what you're looking at having is 70% of your calories coming from fat. You want about 20% coming from protein. And you want about 10% coming from carbohydrates. Now, we're not talking about fruit. We're not talking about junk carbohydrates like a Twinkie or something like that. We're talking about healthy carbs, things that are higher in fiber, um, that are not going to spike your, your insulin levels like we discussed in the, the previous videos. So what we want is complex carbohydrates, mainly above ground vegetables like leafy greens. So your plate should have your protein, which will be, if you eat meat, a, a, a piece of meat, whatever is going to get you satisfied. It's going to have as much leafy greens pretty much as you want to eat because they're really not going to spike, for most people, spike their blood insulin levels. Um, you, and you're going to want a good amount of fat. Now, Fat is very calorie dense, so it doesn't mean you actually have a lot of fat on your plate. But you can get that fat by, one, choosing fattier cuts of meat, if you're eating meat. Um, two, by adding fat to your, to your meal, you can do that by adding healthy oils. We're talking olive oil, avocado oil. Um, we're talking animal, um, naturally pastured animal products such as lard tallow, uh, duck fat, you can cook your vegetables in that if you want to. And we're talking about uh, butter. And we want to stay away from the inflammatory fats, which are the industrial oils or your canola oils, your seed oils, the things that they use a lot of chemical processes to actually extract this oil, cotton seed oil, um, Crisco, all that stuff, that is no-go. You don't want to go there or else your keto diet is going to go south on you real fast. So, the reason why you you don't have to have your plate looking like you have like a big slab of fat, you know, a big slab of protein, and then a little bit of vegetables is because the, the leafy greens and the vegetables are actually very low in calories. It takes a lot of them to, to meet the, that actual, that 10% that calorie um, take. Um, so, whereas fat is so calorie dense that it only takes a little bit to actually get you up to that 70%. So, typically for a meal for me, um, I will have my 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 leafy greens or some sort of green vegetable sometimes it's green beans if you if you're tolerant to the green beans some broccoli some coniferous vegetables if they're cooked vegetables um i i usually cook them in some sort of oil my preference is usually um butter but sometimes i'll use uh lard or or beef tallow or coconut oil depending on what kind of dish i'm doing and Right there, I have a small amount of carbs and a lot of fat. The meat that I choose, um, typically I try to go for fattier cuts of meat. I like to do a lot of lamb um, when I can get it goat, uh, do a lot of beef, but I try to select the fattier cuts of beef. Um, and if I do select something like chicken, 
I usually try to do the chicken thighs or the drumsticks, and I, I add fat through it by adding butter or uh, a nice homemade mayo. Now, this will get you right into your ratios of what you need. And after doing this over time, you're going to get into a, a, a pattern. You're going to get used to this way of eating. And what you're going to do is when you have a meal, you're, you're going to not spike, super spike your insulin levels. Um, you're going to keep your blood sugar levels at a regular level. And you're going to get your body used to eating fat, using fat for fuel. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about testing because a lot of people want to find out if they're producing ketones. Um, and, and a lot of people even end up in like a ketone race, trying to produce as much ketones as possible. And that may not be the best way to go. So testing for ketones after, after you've been on the ketogenic diet, there's, there's a few different ways you can do that. There are the P strips, there are the blood meters, and there is the breath test, like the ketone uh, breath test. Now, the least accurate of these is going to be your P strips. And the P strips, they're, they're good for finding out if you're in ketosis or if you're producing ke ketones. Because just because you're producing ketones doesn't exactly mean you're gonna be in ketosis, but we'll talk about that later. But what those, what they're going to do is they're going to uh, pick up the beta hydroxybutyrate in your urine stream, and this is what happens when your body produces ketones and they spill out through your urine. Your excess ketones that you're not using, you pee out, so the strips pick it up. However, if you are using your ketones for energy, if your body gets really efficient to it, you may not be spilling them out for the through your urine. So you could be peeing on these strips and, and it'll appear on the strips that you're not producing ketones, but you actually are, you're just using them for fuel so they're not going out through your urine. So it could be a little tricky to know whether or not you're in ketosis just by using the strips to, to measure. Your most accurate measuring is your blood meters. And, and these are like your keto mojos, um, um, you know, and it works a lot like a, uh, a uh, blood sugar test kit. You prick your finger, you put it on, on a little thing, put it inside the machine, it tells you what your ketones are, just like a diabetic would use to test their, their, their blood sugar. So this is more accurate because you can have the key, ketone bodies in your blood being ready to being, to being used, but they're still there. And you can see what levels they are. So you can, um, it, it's good to test after a meal and you can see what different types of food actually, uh, how they affect your ketone levels. And if you test blood sugar along with ketones, you can see how it affects your blood sugar levels as well. So that's, those are really great ways to go. Um, the other one is the uh, ketone breath meter. And there's a few that are out on the market. I don't have a whole lot of experience with them. But um, they are pretty close to a blood ketone levels, but they don't involve pricking your finger. And they don't involve buying as many test strips, which can be quite expensive over time. However, to get the initial ketone breath meter, it is a, a big out-of-a-pocket initial expense. So, but once you make that payment, it it's, can actually be a little bit less money over time. What it's doing is it's actually testing the beta hydroxybutyrate that's in your breath. And if it, that's in your breath, it knows that you're producing ketones. Um, and it's, it's pretty close to the same accuracy as a blood test. So those are the three ways of testing. And one thing that people get in a, a um, habit of is is chasing the ketones which what i mean by that is they're constantly trying to make their ketones higher 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 but there's actually a sweet spot for your ketones and we'll we'll talk about that sweet spot later and it can be different for each person but one thing that you have to be you have to register rest assured about if you're producing ketones you are more than likely in ketosis so you will be good as long as you're producing those ketones and 
you can raise, some people have a hard time raising ketones. Some people will find that certain foods that they eat will actually prevent ketones, like especially um, even ketogenic sweeteners can actually raise blood sugar and reduce the amount of ketones that you, you produce. Um, we'll talk about sweeteners in another video later on because those are kind of a Pandora's box. Um, so these are the, the type of things that you can use to see um, you, whether or not you're in ketosis. Um, you can log your food reactions with them. They're a very useful tool. It doesn't mean you have to be using them because if you're eating a ketogenic diet, eventually you will be in ketosis. So if you don't want to measure, you don't want to invest in these tools, that's okay. It could help you um, unless you're obsessive about numbers and stuff. Then for some people, it actually can dishearten them if they're not seeing the numbers that they like. All right, everybody, have a great day and uh, be kind to one another. And we'll talk, see you on the next video.